The reality show Street Outlaw No Prep Kings is a lifestyle for car race fans. A exciting look into subterranean street racing competitions. Lack of preparation before each race makes it more intriguing. While racing on the muddy floor, one of the show's main racers crashed and ended his career. What happened in Daddy Dave's car? Daddy Dave's unfortunate tragedy and other cast members from your favorite show will be discussed. Millions of vehicle aficionados worldwide fell in love with street outlaw No Prep Kings in 2013. Fans want to see the show's cast's adrenaline-fueled antics. Watching the show's actors push the limits of speed, illegal automobile racing, and public rivalry kept viewers hooked. Will there be a crash? Are among the many questions fans have. Who will win the contest? Hanging until race was over. Racers displayed their modified automobiles in each episode. Most of the major cast seem to have fallen off their vehicles, leading to their unexpected exit from the program. Despite its success, Daddy Dave appeared to be lagging. He and a few other cast members represented the Street Outlaw franchise until they left. How did the racers who captivated spectators fare? Number 8 Ryan Martin Ryan Martin joined the 405 crew in the early season of Street Outlaw No Prep Kings and became a standout. He quickly demonstrated his engineering and racing skills with his severely modified Chevrolet, nicknamed Fireball Camaro. He was unstoppable and kept fans on edge with his winning streak. Ryan, the latest racing cast member, wasn't always a racer, despite common assumption. Before joining the Street Outlaw franchise, he was a mechanic who helped street racers install performance packages. Ryan's family loved cars, which sparked his racing enthusiasm. Before racing in Street Outlaw, no prep kings he co-owned B&R Performance, a company that customized high-performance vehicles. This practice improved his racing skills, which helped at the exhibition. He was so excellent with vehicles that everyone knew his fireball would win the tournament when he took the stage. One of the most successful racers in the No Prep Kings series, he has won several titles. A recent tournament. Despite technological challenges, Ryan made the elimination round. He knows his game and emphasizes preparation. His calm and focused race stance has earned him countless victories. He overcame Joe Woods and Jerry Bird to reach the final round, where he defeated Giuseppe. An unforeseen event at Palm Beach International Raceway during his race with Daddy Dave caused controversy. Ryan usually won most races, but Daddy Dave was proclaimed the winner even though Ryan was leading. This statement startled the spectators who saw Ryan ahead just moments earlier. A timing error caused him to fall behind. It was later discovered. Two races almost fought, generating debate. Fans were furious their favorite racer lost. Everyone, especially the racers, felt awkward, but the officials handled it well. To defuse the situation, Ryan and Daddy Dave were asked to speak. This scandal may have driven Ryan off the program, but doesn't. He's running his business and building his brand. His internet business includes caps, tees, and cups. Ryan Martin's racing talents may appear impressive, but wait till you hear the next racer's tactics. Number 7. Street racing star Big Chief, whose real name is Justin Shearer, is most known for his appearance in Street Outlaw No Prep Kings. He grew attracted with racing vehicles at 9 and rode his bike to Route 66, a prominent Oklahoma City racing location to observe. He bought his first car, a 1972 Pontiac Layman's, at 15. This prepared him for street racing. His car, the Crow, was crucial to his success on show. He modified the Crow throughout the next few years, producing Crow Mod, a pro-modified version that highlighted his engineering and racing skills. After appearing in Street Outlaws, No Prep King's Big Chief's career changed. He was an original cast member and quickly became a fan favorite by showcasing his street racing skills.
Big Chief, a leader of Oklahoma City Street Racing, organized races and kept track of top racers. The show became known for this. He often battled with Kai Kelly in high-stakes races on the outlaw scene, which was a highlight of the show. Both drivers pushed each other to improve. Despite enjoying their competition, they recognize each other's strengths and weaknesses. Big Chief had a complicated relationship with Daddy Dave. Many races together resulted to tight competitiveness. However, his lighthearted banter with Monza often provided comic relief. On Street Outlaw, no prep kings. The couple appeared to have a long-time connection and worked together in races. Although Big Chief races well. He faced a danger that may have cost him his career or life. This happened in 2023 during a tournament. During one of Big Chief's most anticipated races, the Crow had the worst dread of every motor racer in accident. He lost control of his wheel, causing major car damage. He survived, although he spent a lot of time in the hospital. Mostly for observation. Thanks for not being seriously harmed, he assured fans of a rapid recovery. After this accident, he had to stop racing to recover. His absence was noted since he is a key character. Despite this setback, he plans to race again soon and his fans can't wait. Big Chief on Street Outlaw. No Prep Kings helps the show succeed. He knows how to keep viewers hooked with his motor racing knowledge. However, Daddy Dave knew more about auto racing. Number 6 Daddy Dave Dave Comstock, known as Daddy Dave on Races, is one of the best street outlaw racers ever. Fans loved his speed and wheel skills. How did he race so well? Daddy Dave was reared in Oklahoma, a place with many motor racing venues and a robust car culture. This launched his truck and unexpected racing interest. He bought his first car, a 1986 Chevy Nova, at 16. As he modified his car for racing, the adolescent realized his ambition. Soon he took his enthusiasm to the street, sharpening his skills and gaining valuable experience. His persistence and special skill gained him peer admiration. Famous for his racing vehicle collection, Daddy Dave which made him king of streets his first major racing car. The 1996 General Motors Company Sonoma helped him gain fame. The engine, suspension, and transmission were upgraded to make the automobile road ready. Despite moving on to other cars, the Sonoma remained significant to his racing career. The construction of Goliath was a turning point in his racing career. A 2005 Chevy Gran Turismo Omogato was heavily modified into a strong and unbeatable racing vehicle. This modified Goliath was admired for a time. Before Daddy. Before joining the Street Outlaw brand, Dave raced locally, thus his performance was near perfect. His local race community and friendships with other racers helped him improve his skills and strategies. Daddy Dave's Street Outlaw debut was a breakthrough. Because of his reputation, he was invited to join the show. Racer and his charm. Daddy Dave helped Big Chief through his injury recovery. Goliath has helped him overcome tough opponents with countless triumphs. Daddy Dave defeated Kai Kelly and Big Chief on the show, cementing his status as a strong contender. Daddy Dave's life-changing accident wrecked his car and changed his life, despite his driving skills. This happened during one of his renowned races on his favorite ride. His rapid loss of control caused the car to somersault fatally many times before crashing. Many fans nearly had heart attacks waiting for news of Daddy Dave's injuries or death after this tragedy. Goliath, Daddy Dave's automobile was badly destroyed, yet he survived with life-threatening injuries. Fans worried about his street racing safety after this occurrence. In this catastrophic incident, racing operations manager Steve Lamberson saw the automobile overpower the circuit for the first time. 
Daddy Dave took a long time off the program to receive and repair Goliath after this collision. The show suffered, but a program wouldn't exist without its cast, right? In addition to the physical injuries from the vehicle accident, Daddy Dave faced health issues, including the physical toll of racing. These obstacles often hindered his performance on the show, but his will to be the best in racing helped him overcome them. However, accidents and illness affected him. He described his struggles to balance his love of racing with the risk, which can be mentally demanding for any racer, but throughout. No matter the obstacles, Daddy Dave will continue his passion for street racing thanks to the community's support. Recently, he won his 25th invitation race at New England Dragway in Epping despite mechanical troubles. Daddy Dave and Monza often clashed, although Monza knew him best in car racing. 5. Monza Jerry Johnson, known as Monza by fans and fellow racers, knows how to drive racing automobiles. He builds the nation's quickest and baddest racing cars and engines. At 6A, he drives a jet black Camaro Rally Sport that has seen numerous races. His nickname comes from his Chevy Monza, which he drove before his split bumper Camaro. He became famous after driving the Monza to the top of Oklahoma City's quickest street vehicles. This ranking is often considered a benchmark for the fastest racers in automobiles in America, as Monza often defeats drivers from other states. After starting racing in the 1980s, his driver's license. One of the most experienced and recognized street racers, he has no plans to slow down. One of Monza's first racing cars was the Chevy Monza, which inspired his moniker. He became identified by it in racing. Monza doesn't tune and prepare alone before race. His son Brandon is crucial to Team Monza and car performance. He frequently discusses his son's role in maintaining his car. When we built the Monza in 2005, it had knobs and timers. You can't touch this car without smashing a laptop. My boy steps in. I lack computer skills. It's hard for me to learn quickly, so we're a terrific team, Monza remarked. These major upgrades enhanced its speed and handling, helping it compete with other racers. The Chevy Nova was another of Monza's strong machines. He spent a lot of effort and money making this vehicle a powerful challenger, and it paid off with many victories. Monza, a quiet man, drives calmly more than most street outlaws. Many competitors may want to criticize the quiet guy, yet he wins swiftly, despite Monza's wheelmanship. Even he is surprised by accidents. A terrible vehicle crash in 2021 destroyed his. He crashed while racing Chuck Seitzinger in his twin Turbo Fox body Mustang, the Death Trap, a multiple-time record holder. He was tardy off the line while Chuck held the scramble button, which increased car power. Monza caught Chuck soon but lost the race. After finishing, things became worse. Monza lost control and hit a curb in front of Chuck, rolling many times. Investing in safety gear paid off as he survived the tragedy unharmed. However, his friends and family at the starting line cried, Reaper from the episode had a terrible occurrence that jeopardized his racing career and worse, his life. Number four, James Goad, known as Reaper from his massively customized Chevrolet Camaro. Stars in Street Outlaw due to Oklahoma racing culture, James, like most racers, loved automobiles from an early age. He joined local races and developed his Street Outlaw talents. No Prep King's image. Soon after joining the show, Goad became a fan favorite. His driving skills and charisma made him ideal for the show. Goad became famous in the Street Outlaws franchise while racing his iconic automobile, but his car had significant issues. Its mechanical faults slowed its performance versus newer, more powerful competitors. With every racer wanting to win, 
Goad had a tremendous obstacle. He had to change his racing strategy and vehicle to fix this performance issue. Unfortunately, his beloved cars were retired in the worst way, which changed his career. What happened to Goad's cars? They were returning from a race when the tragedy occurred. Their trailer caught fire, destroying Goad's treasured cameras, including the Reaper. This accident harmed his car, racing identity, and future goals. It also showed him that he needed to upgrade from his preferred car. He found this adjustment difficult because he was so used to the Reaper and had won many races with it. He had to get a ride after losing his car, which was like losing his identity. He switched to a funny car named Dez Nuts. This restarted his racing career. Goad worked with Dez Nuts to improve the car's performance and traction, two crucial racing factors. The show featured high-stakes racing and cash tournaments. Fans liked his competitiveness and drive to win. He declared his ambition to fight for the $2K grand prize at Bristol, showing his dedication to the sport and drive to win. Goad's race with Kai Kelly and a big chief was remarkable. Their races were some of Street Outlaw's most entertaining. Three Chuck Setzinger, we all agree that Chuck's 1989 Ford Fox Body Mustang, the Death Trap, is one of the coolest cars in Street Outlaw once he could drive. Chuck, like most racers, mastered it. This early encounter shaped his sporting career. From professional to street racing, he enjoyed the sport and was ready for any race. He was named Nopi Drag Racing Association Rookie of the Year and won the Nitrous Express P4X BOX Cup Championship in the four-cylinder division in 2004 for this habit. Chuck is recognized for driving the 405's tiniest but quickest car, but he does more than race. He runs Advanced Motorsports, a repair firm that supports racing and exhibits his mechanical skills, which appear to be successful. He was popular and useful to the program due to his early racing experience. Chuck raced against top national competitors in high-stakes races. He became the No Prep King Series race master after easily winning these races. Despite Chuck's skill, accidents happen. During a 2021 match, he lost control and hit hard. He survived the crash with minor injuries, but his car needed substantial repairs. He missed work to fix death trap and treat his injuries. Chuck started wearing high-quality racing helmets meant to prevent brain injuries in wrecks. He also wore a fire retardant racing outfit to avoid burns. His neck was protected with neck restraints at high speeds. He added a roll cage to his automobile to protect the driver in a rollover or collision. Chuck's strategy and experience have earned him respect among racers. Beyond the racist environment, he emphasizes his supporting wife and two girls. Their support and encouragement are crucial to his success. Many street outlaw racers had automobile accidents during competitions, but James Finney was one of the few who suffered life-threatening injuries. James Finney's injuries, how bad? Number two, Birdman. James Finney Birdman is a famous race car driver. His street outlaw role made him famous. Birdman, from Houston, Texas, discovered racing through family and friends. He is a known and feared racer on the program and is heavily involved in the game. He enjoyed racing and started street racing on Houston's outskirts before sports became prominent. Birdman earned many victories throughout 25 years of racing. His 1999 Firebird Trans AM was ideal for street racers due to its sleek style and powerful engine. When he started racing in Texas, there was no social media to promote him. Birdman became a local celebrity despite that. Everyone in Houston understood his racing strategy. Thus, he has raced like street outlaw racers. Therefore, joining the show's cast seemed like maintaining his love, but on social media. Participating in U.S. racing competitions boosted his fame. 
Birdman was concerned if he or his crew would succeed when he first raced a car. Though confident in his racing skills, he wasn't sure street racing was his area. He instantly recognized he could join and excel on the first day. After several runs, we thought, okay, we can do this. We can dominate, wait and see. Even he is shocked by his fame. He excelled in the no prep race and became a sports ambassador. His leadership will ensure the sport's success. It's common for racers to have vehicle accidents, but Birdman nearly died in one. The accident occurred on July 1, 2023, while filming a highway west of Wyoming. Birdman nearly died in two high-speed crashes while filming. This event was so bad that Birdman and another racer were taken to Wyoming Medical Center. Fans and racers were relieved when doctors said he was stable despite his multiple injuries. Mike Murillo, another racer, requested prayers for the victims on social media. This emphasized the incident's severity. Doctors reported that Birdman was stable after staying at the hospital overnight. His injuries required physical therapy and rehabilitation after hospitalization. Birdman's future as a racer was uncertain following the accident, as his abilities may never be the same. He has not officially announced his return to Street Outlaw No Prep Kings, but his determination and passion for racing suggest he may. Birdman's collision was hardly the only life-threatening one. One James Doc Love Doc is no ordinary racer. He is a significant figure in Street Outlaw No Prep Kings. He raced street for years before the series. Fans have known Doc for his racing skills throughout his show career. He proved that his 1970 Chevy Monte Carlo, which he called the street beast during his time on screen, was ready to defeat any opponent. He was temporarily the top racer on the top 10 list before losing to Sean and then Daddy Dave. He has worked hard to retake his top rank by improving his car's engine. While trying to retake his reign, his career took a sad turn, affecting his hit racing and sporting career. What happened to Doc? He was in an unforeseen accident in Nebraska in September 2020 while recording a race. Describe this incident. As a big end accident, his car barrel rolled many times. Car barrel rolled five to six times and even knocked three eight to ten inch round cedar trees clean off at the ground he claimed of the crash, which injured some. He then thanked followers for their support during his rehabilitation, which has been long and hard. Doc had to rebuild his beloved automobile after this crash. It happened during COVID-19, adding to the cost of car repairs. I'm fine yellow, black, blue, green, and a beautiful purple from neck to calves. In the candid social media post, he said, I was knocked out for 20 to 30 minutes and remember nothing about the crash or the race. I want to thank my family, friends, and some fans for their prayers and support. Doc continues to race in Street Outlaw after his rehabilitation and doesn't plan to retire. What do you think of these racers' life-threatening accidents? Comment below. Please like this video, click the next one, and subscribe to our channel for more updates.